campaign of repealing the recently passed health care legislation? I think I would join with, with the efforts. I think the, the, our party is, uh, is marshalling their efforts on, on, on a, in, in a way where it involves uh, repeal, reform, and um, probably <coughs> shrink, shrink the, uh, the scope of what, of what was attempted to be health care reform. I mean, the Republicans have always been in favor of uh, reform, but, but not at, at, at the magnitude of creating this massive government takeover of, of such a large portion of our, of our economy. Um, so the current bill is uh, the wrong way to go. Uh, no one really truly understands what's in it yet, although Speaker Pelosi said we have to pass it to find out, uh, which is a scary thought. So uh, I, think we, I think we as a party, uh, I think we're, we're very unified. Uh, if anything, I, I was never so proud to see the Republican Party stand together unified against this bill uh, and it showed that we have a real future uh, that we did not splinter apart it's going to take time we have to, to we have to try to uh, uh, compete all around the nation uh, we're on the right side of, of all the issues as far as I can see right now I think the Republican Party has demonstrated that it is the party of the private economy and the Democrats are the party of the state and uh, thank God the private economy is where 80% of the adults work. And if we can connect the dots as a party, we can do extremely well this November. If that happens, it's one step closer to trying to repeal bad, bad actions and bad legislation. Uh, it may take two, three years to, un to un un undo this, um, do this harm. But if we work hard at it, I think we can achieve that. Okay, do you think the federal government should, how do you think the federal government should handle illegal immigration? Well, you know, uh, I'm, my ancestors were Italian Americans. They immigrated into the country legally, and, and, and I'm, I'm in favor of people being able to really realize the American dream uh, if coming into the country lawfully. Uh, I'm opposed to uh, folks being able to work um, without proper documentation, with being, without being uh, lawfully admitted into the country. I'm opposed to sanctuary cities, which we have right here in the 3rd Congressional District, regrettably. Uh, and, and the federal government has really, in, in many ways, um, uh, dropped the ball uh, on this. And I'm sure the next effort along with, by the progressives is going to be an effort to grant um, amnesty to folks, uh, and, they'll, and they'll try to sell that, that it's the only, the only solution they, that, that, that is possible. What it will do, though, when the economy improves, is just bring a, probably bring upon or uh, attract the next wave of folks that want to just walk, walk across the borders. We need to secure the borders by all means, and, um, and immigration should be by lawful means. In education, what role do you believe the federal government should play in education? Uh, very little. Uh, education is really a state and local matter. Uh, there may be some minor role uh, for a clearinghouse for ideas or something along those lines, but, but uh, to me the Department of Education is just a, a massive uh, bureaucracy and a waste of money. To that you've heard about the um, term race to the top that they've been uh, the current administration is trying to do are you familiar with what that means I, I may have heard the euphemism but I'm not familiar with it is it something like no child left behind or a, a it's broader yes. no I can't say I'm, I'm schooled on that right now but probably I can tell you I'll oppose it <laughs> if, it if it was uh, if, if in any way is uh, being espoused by the administration I can tell <laughs> What is your stance on congressional term limits? You know, again, I spoke earlier about. Uh, I think that the founders, the founders envisioned a Congress of citizen legislators. 
they would, would serve for a while and then go back into society, into the private sector. Uh, to in fact have term limits, I know I think the contract of America in 94 had something unofficial, which regrettably was not, would, would, uh, folks made the pledge and then broke the pledge. Um, <laughs> you know, one thing I'm, I can tell you right now, when I get down there, I'm not going to sell out. Um, but I don't know if it would take a, a constitutional amendment to in fact have real term limits. I, I, that, that, that's something that we'd have to consider. Probably, I've heard other, other candidates say something that sounds, makes a lot of sense to me. Probably for a member of the House of Representatives, should be no more than um, the, the amount of time that, that a senator would serve in, in two terms, so that would be 12 years. And even that's probably a little longer than I would be interested in serving. In your opinion, what constitutes an appropriate earmark request? You know, I, I, I don't know if they're ever appropriate. Um, the whole earmark process just has a sleazy tone to it. Um, it just strikes me as something that's done uh, not in the, uh, in, in the light of the day, usually done secretively and snuck in uh, without the, the normal budgeting process and hearings. Um, not positive on this, but I'm virtually positive that Connecticut probably sends more money from its citizens to Washington than we receive back. So I guess it, would, it, it, it does make sense that our representatives fight to get some of that money back. I think a much better approach overall would be to reduce the money we send to Washington. And we don't have to go through this inefficient means of pork barrel legislation. Uh, so, you know, there's still going to be a need, a legitimate need, now and again, for something to be done in the district, um, which is a worthy, a, a, a worthy goal. But it should be, um, there should, it should go through the, the proper budgeting process, hearings, and with some check and balances.